Welcome to this video from the P-Way Engineer. In this video we'll be looking at a gauging analysis concept, end and centre throw. Before we look at end and centre throw, as I always ask, if you have a question about anything in this video, please do drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. If you find this video useful and want to know more, please give it a like and head over to our channel for more videos. Hitting the subscribe button also helps to support the channel. Right, let's get started. Before we get to the difference between end and centre throw, what do we actually mean by throw? Well, the term throw refers to the lateral movement or displacement of the train body as it travels along the track. This movement is caused by the train's natural swaying and bending, particularly when navigating curves in the track. The process of ensuring that the train does not collide with structures or other trains that it passes is known as gauging. It's important to note here that train car bodies, like buses and coaches, are designed as long, rigid structures with no ability to bend in the middle. As a result, when they travel around a curve, two things happen. Firstly, the front of the body swings out wider than the front wheel set, and secondly, the middle of the body cuts the corner, creating a lateral displacement, or throw. Let's look at this with a train body on a curve. I have marked the wheel sets, or bogies, on this train's body outline. You can see that the front and rear of the train body projects past the rails more than it normally would on a straight piece of track. This is end throw. This occurs at both ends of the train. If we, if we look at the centre of the train, on the inside of the curve, the body again overhangs the track. It's greatest at the middle of the two wheel sets. This is centre throw. But why is this important? It is important because the proximity of the track to some of the structures and also the fact that these throw values tend to be awkward to deal with. Take a platform on a curve for example. The clearance to the edge of the coping stone has to take into account the end throw if it's on the outside of a curve. If it's on the inside of the curve, centre throw becomes the issue. In both these cases, the gap the passengers have to step across to board the train can become an issue, increasing the risk of someone falling. If the station has switches within the platform, you may see a notch cut out of the platform. This is there to accommodate the end throw. Centre throw can be an issue for signs and signals if they're placed on the inside of a curve. This is particularly a problem around junctions. The values for both centre and end throw get greater the tighter the radius of the curve. So how is centre and end throw calculated? As with all gauging, full analysis needs to be done with the full swept volumes for each train type that travels on that area of track. This volume gives an outline of the maximum movement of a certain train type in any direction. Computer programs are used to run this against survey data of line side structures. Check out my channel for more videos on gauging. We can however use some simple equations to get an idea of our end and centre throw values. For the train we are going to look at we need to know a few basic dimensions. Firstly, we need to know the overall length of the vehicle. Next, we need to know the distance between the wheelbases or bogies on that type of train. As you can see, doing this for multiple train types is going to be a time consuming activity, showing why gauging computer programs are very well suited to this type of analysis. The last thing we need is the radius of the curve. We then have different equations for the centre and end throws as shown. As the dimensions of trains are normally given in metres, these equations give the throw values also in metres. If we were to run a few different lengths of train body and wheel bases through these equations, you would notice that end throw is greater when the more of the train body extends over the wheel sets. For centre throw, this is also greater the longer the distance between the wheel sets. Again, both throw values increase the tighter the radius of the curve. We can summarise all that we've discussed in this video with this simple graphic on the screen now. Thank you for watching this video on end and centre throw from the P-Way Engineer. There's lots more to check out over on our channel and don't forget to hit subscribe.